One of the best ways to save for college is by taking advantage of something called a 529 college savings plan. So this plan allows your family to sock away cash in order to pay for future educational expenses. Now, even though most of us have heard of a 529 plan, you may not know all the little nuances that go into this vehicle, including how your family can actually receive tax advantages or other benefits by using this savings tool. So in today's video, I'm going to tell you all about 529 college savings plans, including when your, your family can experience some benefits and when they wouldn't when it comes to these savings vehicles in order to help you decide whether or not you want to take advantage of this opportunity. Now, don't forget to hit subscribe because every single week I'm releasing a new strategy to help your family work towards a debt-free education. In fact, some of these strategies might even help you free up some of the money if you are putting it away into a 529 plan. I'll mention more about that in just a bit. But ultimately, every single week you can get a new strategy to try to avoid having to pay for college yourself or borrowing that student loan debt. Hey there, my name is Jocelyn Panita Pearson, founder of the Scholarship System and Debt Free Degree Lab, where we redefine paying for college for families so that they can have a strong financial future rather than one that's riddled in student loan debt. In fact, to date, our families have surpassed $10 million in funding that they've received to pay for college. That might sound insane, but we've been doing this for quite a few years and we've figured it out. So I hope that you enjoy this video. <music> Now, what is a 529 college savings plan? Well, this is really a savings vehicle that's designed specifically for education expenses. They come with tax advantages when used correctly, which includes when used for paying for college. Now, they can earn a return that's similar to investment accounts. So this is where they can also be more advantageous than say just a regular savings account where the earnings are really quite minimal. Now comment below for me, did you start a 529 plan for your student or your, your children if you have multiple children? And if so, when did you do it? What year, what age were they when you started it? And if you haven't, what age are they now that you're considering it? I'll talk about whether or not you want to start one if it's a little bit closer to college in just a moment. Now before that, let's talk about what you need to know about 529 plans. So every state in the United States has a 529 plan option. What varies are really the benefits. Those vary state to state and can sometimes really um, have advantages where you may want to sign up for another state's 529 plan in order to receive those benefits. So just because you live in one state doesn't mean you have to go with their 529 plan. You can actually choose one from other states. Now, please note that some states do have residency requirements, so you really do have to do your research here. Now, deductions can range anywhere from nothing to up to $30,000 a year, so you really wanna make sure that you are looking into the benefits and not just signing up for the first one that you see. There are seven states that allow tax incentives for any state 529. So if you live in one of these states, this is a great opportunity for you. These states include Arizona, Arkansas, Kansas, Minnesota, Missouri, Montana, and Pennsylvania. So those seven states, if you live in those, you can receive tax incentives even if you invest in a different state's 529s. Now, there are also states that don't offer any incentive at all, and that includes California, Delaware, Hawaii, Kentucky, Maine, New Jersey, and North Carolina. So unfortunately, they don't necessarily have any kind of incentives if you live in that state, regardless of which 529 plan you're choosing. However, remember that 529s still have that growth opportunity that your family can take advantage of. Now, as far as opening a 529 plan, you there are some that have as low of a minimum as $25. So this is not like your family has to have tens of thousands of dollars in order to even qualify to open one. They purposely want families to put any kind of contributions they can towards their education, even if it's minimal. So again, uh, in North Carolina, for example, it's $25. Now, the nice thing with 529 plans is that actually anyone can contribute to your student's 529 plan. So this could be grandparents, aunts, uncles, friends. If they have something where they want to give a gift to uh, the child, but they don't want it to be a thing, you could ask for them to make contributions to your child's 529 plan. Now, talking about deductions and uh, tax advantages, over 30 states actually allow non-owners to claim deductions for contributions. So this would mean that, say you started a 529 
29 plan for your student, but a uh, grandparent wanted to contribute to it, if they're in one of the 30 states, then they can actually receive the advantage as well. So I'm not going to rattle off the 30 states. You can look it up. We'll include a link in the description. But I do want to know that it can actually be a tax advantage for non-household uh, members as well. Now, the nice thing about this is you can choose to approach this however you want. Maybe your family just puts a big lump sum up front and then you just add slowly to it as you go. Or maybe this is just something where every month, if you see you have a little bit extra left over, you can put that money into the account or they also allow you to set up auto drafts. So this is where you can just say, okay, every two weeks we want to contribute this much to this fund. So it really depends on how your family wants to do it, but just know that that is a capability with most of these 529 plans. Now, what can funds be used for? They can be used for college tuition, they can be used for room and board, pretty much most qualifying education expenses. But if, it's ed if it is related to your student's college education, then it is valid for this. Now, they also, as of 2000, 2017 allow 529s to be used for K through 12 tuition. So if your child has tuition during their uh, pre-college education, then that could be an option. Also um, qualifying student loan payments, among other things. Now I have to mention that one of the ways that I specifically paid for college was I got scholarships to pay for it. And I'm gonna explain why these are especially beneficial to 529 plans in just a moment. But this is something to keep in mind. Even if your family puts money away for in the 529 plan for your student's education, they should still be applying for scholarships because scholarships can cover all of these expenses that I mentioned as well. So if you want to learn where we find our scholarships, how our families build their list of legitimate scholarships, then click the button, you should see one on the screen. There's also a link in the description. You can go to the scholarshipsystem.com slash free webinar, and that will take you to my six step training on how to secure legitimate scholarships. So make sure you check that out after this video. Now, before I get into a few common concerns that families have around 529 plans, I do want to address the question around how do we invest the money? So some funds might encourage aggressive funding where some might be more conservative. Ultimately, I am not a financial advisor. Please speak with a professional on that. Okay, this is not financial advice, but just a general rule of thumb is the closer your student is to graduating high school and to needing this money, the less aggressive you want to be, the more conservative you want to be. We have seen where, for example, in 2009, there were students where their family funded their education with a 529 plan and it lost its value, half of its value overnight. So that keeping those funds in stocks up until the very last minute really did not fare well for those families. So you want to make sure that you are less aggressive the, the sooner to when your student needs the funding for college. Again, a financial advisor can help you do that. The other thing with these funds is sometimes they will have just target year options. This is similar to a retirement plan if you've ever used one of those where you just have to choose the year you want to retire and it automatically invests your, your funds into a bad basket that they come up with based on the riskiness of that year. Well, some of the 529 plan options have the same thing where you can say, okay, well, my student is going to need the money for this year and they will figure out the correct portion between uh, bonds and stocks, risky and not. So that's an option. But again, always run this by a financial advisor so that you know that your money is being put to the best use. Okay, so let's talk about some of the common concerns that I hear from families. One is my student is already in high school. Is it too late to begin? Always, you will hear me say any of our strategies, including applying for scholarships, including savings for 529s, it is never too late to get started. Any kind of money that your family can put away. If you're getting the tax credit, even better. If you can put away any kind of funds, then take advantage of that. Now, I do want to say that we always say you can borrow for college, you cannot borrow for retirement. So first and foremost, parents, please take take care of yourself. Make sure that you are in a strong financial situation before you're focusing on saving for your student, um, unless you can do both at the same time. But either way, make sure you're not sacrificing your retirement and your financial future for theirs. They have many more years that they can go ahead and pay off some student debt. So again, we've got tons of strategies to avoid that student debt, but I do have to say that. 
Now, the other thing I want to mention here is that if you say your student is even uh, ready to go to college or already there, you can actually put the money away towards a master's degree. So again, this is why it is never too late. In fact, this is one of the strategies that we teach in Debt-Free Degree Lab, where we have many lessons on all of these topics that are way more in depth. And we have one focused on 529 plans. So lots of strategies, including how to minimize the impact of a 529 on FAFSA. So if you want to learn more about that, you can go to thescholarshipsystem.com slash DFD. But that said, one of the strategies here is that your student can put away the money for their master's degree in a 529 plan if they get a tax incentive. So if they're going to have to pay for their master's anyway, they might as well put it in this vehicle, take advantage of the tax incentives, and it receive the high growth and not have to pay the taxes on that growth. So this is where you can get a little bit more strategic. And again, it's never too late to start that. Another question we get is, can this be used for trade schools? And the answer is yes, you can typically use this for any accredited trade school. Or, and as long as there are any uh, qualified education expenses, this can be an option. So if you're unsure if your student is even going to go to college, maybe they're considering a trade school, it can be used for that as well. Now that leads me perfectly into the next concern. And that is, what if my student doesn't go to school? What if they don't use this money? Well, first, funds can be transferred to another beneficiary. So the beneficiary is the person that receives the benefit of the 529 plan. So they're the person that's typically going to college. They're going to get the money out. But this can be transferred to siblings, to cousins, to aunts, uncles, parents. So actually, there are a lot of family members that the money can be transferred to. So that could be an option. Another option is to use the money for a non-educational purpose. However, you must know that you have to then pay a 10 percent penalty on the earnings. So again, you want to make sure that you're talking to your CPA, your financial aid advisor before doing any kind of withdrawals or any kind of strategies with this. But ultimately, if you're if you do have to use the money, you can take it out for non-education things. However, you will get hit with a penalty. Now, there are three different exceptions to that. First is scholarships. So this is why I mentioned earlier, even if your family has put away tons of money in a 529, scholarships can actually free up that money. So say your student receives $5,000 in scholarships, they can pull, they can withdraw $5,000 out of their plan without paying that 10% penalty. They'll still have to pay the, the taxes on the earnings, but they will not get hit with that 10% penalty. Now, military or veteran assistance for tuition, that means that your student can get that money out without any kind of penalties. And then also employer program assistance. So up to around $5,000, your student can pull that without any kind of fees if the employer has some sort of program to help them pay. So these are some opportunities where, say your student does not have, uh, does not want to use the 529 for education, they can get funds elsewhere, then they can pull it out without that 10% that penalty. With the cost of college rising exponentially, there really is no time like now to put away money and start saving for the future. And if you do want to do that, then 529 college plans are a great opportunity. I do want to note that for many of you, you will need strategies in addition to saving in the 529 plan. But that said, that doesn't mean that you don't want to put savings into a 529 plan. Like I mentioned in today's video, there are lots of little advantages, tax incentives, that, and also tax-free growth that you can take advantage of if your family uses this tool. And again, remember, it's never too late to begin this. So it's always helpful to put any kind of money away for your student. Now, if you're curious about any kind of impacts on FAFSA or uh, more strategies when it comes to 529s, I highly recommend you checking out thescholarshipsystem.com slash DFD. And also make sure you check out that free scholarship training because again, scholarships can free up 529 money without that penalty, but also it can just close the gap between the cost of college and what you have saved. So you can learn more about that free training in the description below. Now, if you have any questions, feel free to comment with them. I'm happy to answer them. But for now, I hope that this video was helpful. I hope that you take advantage of this great opportunity and I will see you in the next video.